Welcome to another video. Today is a full day of eating. So in this video, you're gonna see everything I eat to fill up a 2,800 calorie diet. So 2,800 calories is kind of like my maintenance. I'm actually two to three pounds less than I was last video. So we're probably gonna bump up my calories, but we are not in the prep yet. So my physique prep for my show in October has not started, but we are in what we would call a holding phase. So this is where we're trying to build a little bit of muscle, maybe push my metabolism and my intake a little bit higher, fill out, really train hard, push performance, get good sleep, and just kind of prep my body for the prep but somehow that caused me to lose weight. So you're gonna see what the diet looks like, see if that may be the reason I'm actually cutting fat simultaneously, but nonetheless, 2,800 calories, see everything I eat in a single day. Let's get into it. Protein heavy, carb heavy, a lot of micronutrients. I'm in a hurry, I gotta get to the office. The girls are still sleeping, so I'm trying to be quiet. I got a consult at eight in 25 minutes, so I gotta get there quick. So I'm gonna smash this meal, I'm gonna get to the office, and then I'm gonna break down some of these meals and the macros at the next meal. I am normally not in such a rush in the morning. I actually like to try to take my time and like enjoy my meal. I usually listen to a podcast or watch some YouTube videos or try to do some kind of education in some way regard. Personal development, business, coaching, something like that while I eat slowly and digest my food properly, which is super important. Not only when you're dieting because the slower you chew and the longer you let your food actually take to go through the process of breaking down, digesting, absorbing, you will actually be more full you'll be more satiated, you have a higher satiety rate when you slow down, but also it just helps avoid gut issues, bloating, gas, stuff like that because you're gonna have better digestion. But that meal right there was 52.8, but 52 grams of protein, 17.5 grams of fat, 48 grams of protein. So basically like 53, 18, 48, and that is 540 calories. My first meal of the day isn't the largest, but sometimes it is beneficial to have a large first meal a day because it actually sets you up for better energy throughout the day, as you would imagine. And research does show this might actually help you have a higher maintenance caloric intake because at that point, you're gonna burn more calories throughout the day because you have more energy, you move more, neat goes up, BMR goes up, and therefore you burn more calories if you have a larger portion of your calories during the morning. Now, it's a very small factor. It's like splitting hairs, and that's why right now I'm not too concerned about it. I pretty much evenly spread out my meals throughout the day, and I focus on having something I enjoy, which for me is gonna be cheesy eggs, so egg whites with some cheese on it, cooked in oil, a little bit of spinach, blueberries, like high micronutrient dense foods, high filling foods, so lean proteins, and a good amount of carbs with high fiber. So really simple ingredients put together to make it easy to track, tasty, and stick to my macros. And it's something I enjoy, so I can adhere to it. That was meal one. I'm heading to the office. I got a consult and some deep work to do, and I will catch you at meal two. We got sweet potato, I learned this recently, jewels, sweet potato, organic jewels, sweet potato, it, the orange sweet potatoes, they're not yams, they're actually sweet potatoes. I thought only the white ones were sweet potatoes and the purple ones and the orange ones were yams, but these are sweet potatoes, the orange sweet potatoes with canned green beans that are diced up and thrown in there. Um, canned green beans just because it's easy to prep and then ground beef. And this is grass fed local from the local butcher grass-fed 96% lean ground beef. So it is extremely lean ground beef, which in my opinion just has more nutrient density than turkey. So if I can choose something that is just as lean as turkey, ground turkey, but has more flavor and it is more nutrient dense, which beef is 1 million percent more nutrient dense with vitamins and minerals um, than turkey is, uh, I'm gonna go with that for sure. So this meal is 47 grams of carbs, eight grams of fat, and 42 grams of protein. So again, ground beef, green beans, sweet potatoes, about 200 grams of sweet potatoes, half a cup of green beans, and then I have two tablespoons of that teriyaki sauce, the Kikkoman's, and then literally a milliliter of olive oil, which is just such minimal. But because I'm in prep, I am tracking everything. And basically what that is, it's about a teaspoon when I'm cooking it, just enough to make sure the pan doesn't stick too much. But with beef, you have a little bit of fat and it's gonna be easier to cook without a bunch of Pam or spray on the pan. The big key here is, is that it's easy to prep, it's easy to track, it's an easy structure, and I actually enjoy the taste. So one of my biggest tips for people who are flexible dieting or trying to achieve goals through their diet is that you cannot put any one food on a pedestal. You can't put 
superfoods on a pedestal. There is no like special protein or like you gotta have chia seeds and flax and all this shit. There is green vegetables. There's vegetables that are high nutrient dense. There is fruits, there is protein, there is fats, there is carbs. Sweet potatoes are great. Regular potatoes are great. Orange, white, purple, they're all great. Rice is great. Brown rice, white rice, quinoa, oats, whole grain bread, bagels, pasta. And then? Like you can make anything work and most of them that are whole grain or natural from a standpoint of like they were grown on earth, right? Not like processed, enriched, bleached white bread, which that can fit in there too in certain circumstances. But if you have whole grains, if you have good natural food, it has nutrients in it. So what you wanna do is have a template, right? I find easy to track and accurately measurable foods, which we know are not scanning a barcode and crossing our fingers and hoping that it's accurate because food labels have a 20% margin of error. So if we want, really wanna dial in, especially during a deficit that we're we're trying to take seriously and accomplish goals with, which I'm not even in the deficit yet. I'm in this like primer or this holding phase where we're trying to kind of maintain a solid weight, build my calories up, build some muscle before prep starts for the physique show. But the point is, is pick foods that are easy to track, pick foods that are easy to prep, Pick foods that you know are accurate when you're tracking and when you're measuring and that they're universal because I don't care what brand of canned green beans you get, they're always going to be green beans and a half a cup is going to be the exact same amount of carbs. And when you do that, it's a drag and drop template. Fat, protein, starchy carb, high dense, high micronutrient density, vegetables or fruit, you put them together, boom, you have a whole balanced meal that tastes great, easy to prep, easy to track, and you can repeat it over and over again, which builds consistency in the diet and consistency with the metrics that you're tracking. So I'm going to smash this meal, I'm starving, and then I got to get back to work because we have a lot of content to create. So I'll see you at the next meal. All right, so now it is time to eat my pre-workout meal. It is almost 1 p.m., which is typically when I eat because I usually train at about three, so I like to eat about two hours prior because I have a pretty large meal of carbohydrates, a good amount of protein, and a decent amount of fat, not too much fat, but just enough to slow the digestion of that meal down enough to where it's a good sustainable amount of carbohydrates and fuel throughout the session. And I also actually take in carbs in the session, which I'll explain a little bit later when I make my pre and intro workout shake. But for now, I'm gonna go prep my meal, and then we'll sit down uh, I'm just mapping out some stuff for Tail Life Apparel before this launch coming up in about a week. And uh, I'll explain the breakdown of this meal for my pre-workout oats. <music> So this is meal three of the day. It's literally just oatmeal, almond butter, whey protein, a shitload of cinnamon, and a little bit of baking powder and stevia, tiny bit of stevia, which I don't track. I don't track cinnamon. I don't track baking powder. It is minuscule if there is any type of minor calories in it. It is just pointless to, to track because it doesn't change, right? So I don't track that. But the whole point of this meal is pretty simple. I want to get carbs in my system that are relatively low fiber. I don't need a lot of fiber right now because I don't want my gut churning and digesting a ton while I'm training in a couple hours, which today's leg day. So I definitely don't want that. But I do need a good amount of carbs and I need it to be somewhat slow digesting and easy for me to digest. So I pick a carb that is really good for me. Oats, rice, rice cereal, cream of rice, stuff like that typically works really well, especially the lower fiber starchier sources like rice, cream of rice for a post-workout meal. Pre-workout can have a little bit more fiber because I have a couple hours to go before I train. But the closer you are to eating within that window, the less fiber you actually want. So I have about 18 grams of almond butter, which I believe is like 12 12 grams of fat. We'll pull the macros up on the screen. I think I have like 90-ish grams of carbs in this meal because I have 100 grams of weighed dry oats, old fashioned, quick cooking dried oats. And I have one and one quarter scoops of first form CTC protein powder, which is like their cinnamon toast crunch flavor. This is like my favorite meal day. It, it tastes amazing. Bunch of cinnamon there, heat it up, stir it up. It tastes great, but it also is very easy to digest, easy to track again, following the last meal's bullet points. Um, and it works great as a pre-workout meal. So I've been in this uh, separate office this is where we do kind of all of our clothing stuff and all of our client gifts. This is some of the stuff that's gonna be dropping soon. These are some teasers for some future drops. But I'm actually in here just mapping out some of the content and some of the promos for the next launch. I'll show you a little teaser real quick. So we got the hoodie with the matching shorts, underrated overachiever over it. This is like the heavyweight hoodie, it's phenomenal. We got his and her uh, mesh shorts coming out. This is all May 7th, so this is gonna be right around the corner with the matching crew neck. So sick. We got the premium fitted tee. We got a lot of good stuff dropping. May 7th. The clothing is about to drop. May 7th, taylifeprail.co. Check that out. But I'm going to smash this meal. 
record a podcast, finish the TLA stuff, and then we're gonna head to this other gym and crank on some leg presses, some hack squats, some like really heavy leg training. I'm gonna be a baby deer afterwards. All right, so now it is time to train. We have a leg day. It is a high volume leg day, and uh, we gotta use some machines I don't have. So we're actually gonna go over to a big box gym down the street so I can use the leg press, the Smith machine, hack squat, stuff like that. Right now I gotta make my pre-workout and my intra workout shake. So the pre-workout, everything first form for us. Project one, uh, this is strawberry pineapple. I basically have all the flavors now, but I love this one. I'm honestly huge on pre-workout, Pre-workout's not one of those things that's gonna like make or break your results. Caffeine is the number one driver of performance improvements. But as you see here, there is some amino acids in here which aren't mandatory, but I do think it is, uh, maybe this is the bro in me. It's nice to have some amino acids in your system while you're training just to aid recovery. There is research to show it does lower DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. So there may be some benefits there. Likely very minimal, if any, if you are taking in enough protein throughout the day. But the main thing in here that I'm looking at is citrulline malate, a little bit of highly branched cyclic dextrin, which I take more of in my intro workout shake. Then we have betaine, beta alanine, a couple nootropics in this as well. So just things to help you focus, get a better pump, better blood flow. I don't have funnels and I'm done dry mouth scooping it because the scoop is so big. So rip out a piece of paper, throw it in a bottle. Then we're going with the intro. So the intro workout is intraformance by first form again. Highly branched cyclic dextrin, having carbohydrates during your workout is kind of like a debated topic. There's a lot of people who actually will just do candy. They'll have Skittles or Sour Patch Kids or whatever during their training session, which actually does work. Cause the point is, is you're getting some simple sugars, simple carbs that are gonna rapidly be absorbed and digested. And it's just gonna give you a better pump. Gonna give you a little bit of surge of energy, help your blood glucose levels, control cortisol, so on and so forth. Highly branched cyclic dextrin is just way easier to digest. It's a little bit healthier in my opinion. And there is some research on this to show a little bit of more muscle growth as well as higher volumes in the gym. So if you have a high volume training program, meaning you're doing a lot of sets and it's a long duration training program, it can be beneficial to have some carbs during your workout so that you can prolong your performance, do more volume and blunt the cortisol response, which is the stress hormone that is also catabolic and breaks down muscle tissue. So this we got highly branched cyclic dextrin, dextrose and fructose in there. And the fructose is gonna be basically powdered fruit. A lot of people don't think about that, but when we mix different types of carbohydrates, we utilize different different basically pathways, right? Absorption pathways, glucose absorption pathways. So by mixing in different carb sources as well as sodium and then my caffeine, I'm actually leveling up my ability to absorb carbs rapidly for that session. MMA fighters use it a lot for uh, getting ready for fights because they cut a lot of water weight and cut a lot of weight and then they'll do a rapid replenishment with orange juice, caffeine, water, sodium, bunch of stuff in a jug and it'll rapidly replenish weight and glycogen so that they can be at a better weight and be ready to perform. So that, is the geek talk of this video with my intro workout shake. I'm gonna shake these up, we're gonna drive over, get a leg day in. It is a ton of machine work, a classic bodybuilding. And part of the reason is you wanna go as close as you can to failure, sometimes to failure, to maximum stimulate growth of tissue, muscle growth. So for ultimate hypertrophy, you gotta go to failure. And the safest way to go to failure is on machines because I can push it and push it and push it. I can change the weights very easily. I can isolate in a muscle far better. I don't have any load on my spine. I don't have any load on the joints really. It's just a way easier way to isolate a muscle and go further and further and further until you basically fail on that muscle. And then you move on to the next one, right? So when it comes to bodybuilding, part of the reason why so many bodybuilders do so many machines instead of barbells and dumbbells is because you can go closer and closer, if not all the way to failure, without worrying about injury risk. Cramping, getting a car wreck. Drive home, get my post workout meal, 
which is dinner, kick it with the family for a bit, have a dessert, pass the fuck out. All right, post-workout meal about to go down. We're gonna keep this super simple. Grilled chicken, throwing it on the grill. I'm gonna uh, tenderize these, beat these a little bit so they just flatten out, tenderize. Throw them on the grill, which I already got started because it is sunny as hell out and we need to grill. Usually we do the air fryer, which is amazing too. Then I got white rice, which is cooked in bone broth um, or chicken broth, chicken stock. Either one, both are amazing. Tastes like top ramen. That's my meal. Grilled chicken dipped in barbecue sauce. About six ounces, get about 40 something grams of protein. Two cups of white rice, it's about 315 to 330 grams on the scale, it gives me like 90 carbs, and it's just I'm just gonna have sodium on it. So white rice cooked in chicken broth, which is amazing for your gut health. It's great for digestion, and it tastes like top ramen. It's amazing, and that's it. That's all she wrote. No veggies, no nothing crazy. Simple, easy to digest, gets me the nutrients I need, which is protein and carb, and that's it. I'm gonna get to cooking and get grubbing, because I'm hungry. finish off the night with the final meal. Casein protein ice cream. This is chocolate casein, Adam's peanut butter, a scoop and a half of whey protein, or, or sorry, casein protein, so slower digestive, which is debatable. If you have fat, if you have fiber, if you have something with it, it's gonna be slow digesting. The important thing is that you get protein before bed regardless, but with this, it's nice because it is a little bit thicker. It does take a little bit longer to digest and break down, which is shown by research. And ultimately, it just makes you feel a little bit more satiated. So I like to have something like this before bed, but chocolate with peanut butter and then cut up bananas. This meal, we're gonna pull this up because this caps off the day of eating. Final meal of the night, which is usually at about 9 p.m. And I usually go to bed at like 10.30, probably fall asleep after that. Give myself a couple hours to digest. This meal right here is 33 grams of carbs, 20 grams of fat, and 45 grams of protein, which gives me my total for today of 231 grams of protein, 330 grams of carbs, and 69 grams of fat. So this is like a moderate fat, high carb, high protein diet. We're gonna keep building my carbs up while we're in this kind of a holding phase, this building phase, trying to just really establish a good baseline before going into prep. And that's about 2,800 calories for the day. Training five days a week, pushing it really hard. I feel like I'm recomping a bit because I'm just so dialed in. So this is a really successful holding phase, kind of a lean gaining phase prior to starting the actual prep. But last meal of the day, case and protein. I'm gonna take a little bit of supplements. This morning I took my multivitamin, greens drink, reds drink, fish oil, vitamin D, adrenal support. I'm going to take again, which is right here from First Form. This is just something that's gonna lower cortisol levels levels, lower stress levels before bed, kind of help me calm down and unwind. One more probiotic just to keep my digestive system on point, especially when I'm taking in a lot of calories. And then last but not least, night tea. And I swear by this. This is uh, vitamin B6, magnesium, and zinc. This is the testosterone boosting side of it, which is debatable. Testosterone boosters in general don't really work, natural ones. Supplements that are testosterone boosters only really work if you're deficient. So this magnesium, vitamin B, and zinc will improve my testosterone levels if I'm deficient in those nutrients. If I'm not, it does nothing. But nonetheless, that will help recovery. Then it has GABA, valerian root, kava kava, which is a root powder, 5-HTP, alpha GPC, and then melatonin. The melatonin is gonna knock me out, put me to sleep, and the rest of those things I just rambled off are essentially like neurotransmitter boosting supplements. And they're a way to improve my neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, just to balance things out, my neurotransmitters, the neurochemicals in my brain to help me lower stress levels, lower cortisol, unwind, chill the fuck out, and just go to bed. I love this product. Um, Firstform.com slash tailored coaching method. If you wanna grab any of these, I highly recommend Night Tea for Ladies Core 21 and Master Brain PM. Those are three amazing supplements for hormonal balance, but also sleep, which is why I'm taking this. So that is my supplement regimen. That is a full day of eating at about 2,800 calories. I suspect that my coach is gonna bump up my calories and my carbs, probably going into next week because I did drop a couple pounds this week, but my physique is looking good. I'm feeling amazing. I'm getting strong, great pumps in the gym. I'm pushing it hard. And we got a little bit left before we start the actual prep, which is probably gonna be about 14 to 16 weeks long of cutting hard. About another month in us of, of really pushing it hard in the gym, trying to build a little bit of muscle and, and just priming the body before we start. So that's it. That is a full day of eating. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you watching. If you like the video, please like the video. Comment below if you have any questions or you need anything from me whatsoever. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can get updated every single Wednesday when we drop a new video in the series leading me to summer shredding in October 21.